Okay, so this is Pi Amiga, uh, which is the Amiga emulator on Raspberry Pi 4. It's an incredible system, and this is the lockdown version, and I've updated it to 1.4. This fits on a 32 gig SD card, and uh, it is incredible how much stuff is in here. I've only scratched the surface so far, uh, and really because when I had an Amiga, it was all about games, and so I've just gone down the games route, but there's all sorts of things on here, all sorts of systems, loads and loads of settings, really, really good. But I thought I'd go through some of the problems I had kind of getting to this point. So let's switch over to my Mac. So first of all, I was searching for Pi Amiga because I think someone mentioned it in the comments. I couldn't find the actual comment, um, but I'd seen it before and I meant to cover it and I just had loads of other things going at the time. But um, I think I might have tried it and couldn't get something to work, um, but, uh, but this time I persisted a bit longer. So I found this blog, uh, so something odd. I can't put links in for this because um, of, of just the way the Amiga is copyrighted and things, so uh, you can obviously search yourself for this. Although I have um, bought the uh, Kickstart ROMs from the Android store. This, this came up in another YouTube video, and uh, basically you can, uh, for £1.79, you can buy the Amiga Forever Essentials, which allows you to download the ROMs, which you do need for this. Um, I had already been using them from uh, I think it was Damaso's build, one of the RetroPie builds. I'd gone into the BIOS folder and I'd, I'd grabbed the ROMs from there. But actually now I've got them legitimately uh, from this Amiga Forever Essentials app. So if I click on that, uh, you can see, uh, well, it's not installed on this device because this is a Mac. But uh, yeah, it just lets you download the ROMs. And they're the owners of the ROMs uh, at this stage, so it's legitimate. So in this blog, uh, there's various different things in here. Uh, and one of them was... Uh, a link in here, which is this one. So you can see here about Pi Amiga, it's a 32 gig disk image you burn to SD card for Raspberry Pi 3 and 4, and when booted up presents a rather nice workbench desktop with loads of games and apps. Uh, and it's got the password in here as well, uh, which is for when you unzip it. I had problems with the download, uh, so I was I was researching this while I was on my Mac, and so I thought I'll just download it to my Mac. And I don't usually use my Mac for things like that. Uh, I usually would do it on the Pi. I had various different extractors, couldn't get it to work. Um, but also the downloads were weird because all the downloads came down as unknown, unknown two, unknown three, unknown four. So what I had to do was I basically right clicked on them, uh, did get info, and I could see there was a name in here. So you could see the file name here is PyMega version 1.2b underscore pi4 dot 7zip. So I knew it was a 7zip file, dot 001. But it wasn't named as that file. So all I did was copy that. And then I renamed the file. So I basically put it in here and I renamed that as, as this file name. Uh, and I did that for all the files. I still couldn't get it to work on my Mac, but uh, I then I knew I had 7-zip on my wife's computer upstairs because I've used that for various things before. So I just put them on a USB stick, took them upstairs, opened the first file with 7-zip, and it it uh, it unpacked everything and made one individual file which could then be written with Raspberry Pi images. So that bit took a bit of getting over uh, because I downloaded three or four things on the Mac, uh, but all of them wanted... Uh, wanted me to pay to get past a certain point, which I hadn't come across much on the Mac, but it's very annoying. And this is the sort of thing you don't tend to get with Linux, so plus points for Linux, uh, but also 7-zip is free on Windows 10. So uh, it was a, a good point for Windows 10 as well. So back in the day, I bought an Amiga 600 uh, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, but a guy I was working with uh, also bought one, but he ended up getting one uh, with an HD drive from the Dixons down the road. And uh, he couldn't get to grips with it. He had all sorts of problems with it. And so he said to me, he said, do you want to swap? So I said, well, I'll see if I can get it going. If I can, I'll swap. And in the end, we did a straight swap. And so I ended up with a better Amiga. Um, but uh, it wasn't as straightforward as the one with just the floppy drive. And all I wanted to do was play games on it. Uh, but in the end, I ended up uh, installing some games to it. And I was glad that I'd done the swap. Uh, and I did a video when I bought it down from the loft because I figured, oh, I'd, I'd get it up and running. I'd, I saw that, uh, you know, Amiga was still very popular and I thought, oh, yeah, I'll do a video on it. So I bought it all down, bought all my box games down and everything like that. And I had a great time setting it up. Um, but unfortunately, various things didn't work. 
uh, one being the floppy drive, uh, which tends to hold you back a bit. Um, so I ended up selling my boxed games, uh, and they actually sold for quite a bit. I've, I'm sure I mention it in, in these videos if you're interested in that side of it. But I also ended up buying a GoTech USB floppy drive, which is this. And uh, it, uh, it slots into the machine, and you can use a USB stick, but it pretends to be a floppy drive. But it, it works, it's, it, uh, but there were certain things that wouldn't work and certain software issues. Again, it's all in these videos. I mean, that one's nearly half an hour, so I must have, must have gone through quite a bit of detail on it. Uh, I've also run uh, Amiga FSUAE on the Raspberry Pi, and one of them is a, there's actually a CD32 video that I need to add to that playlist, which, which ran really well on the Raspberry Pi. But this Pi Amiga build, uh, this lockdown edition, is something else. It is incredible. So let's go back over to that. Actually, before we go back into Pi Amiga, um, just one thing I've noted. Uh, so the Pi 400 works uh, with this image, but as long as you update it, you have to download it uh, and then update it first before you can get it to work. So I feel it works better on my Pi 4. I, I don't know why, but I feel it's just been more stable. Uh, so I'm going to use my Pi 4 8 gig for this. Uh, I'm sure you don't need 8 gig. I'm sure it makes no difference to have that. But I just seem to think that it works a bit better on the Pi 4. So this is running Twister OS at the moment from an SSD drive, which is here. Uh, if I pop the SD card in, which has got Pi Amiga on it, you'll see what happens on the screen. So we go down to the bottom and open up the folders. Uh, you can see I've got a kick partition here on my micro SD card. Uh, this is what was created by Pi Amiga being installed. And you can see that I've got various different ROMs in here. Uh, and uh, they just need to be added into there. So if you use that Android app and get the Amiga Forever ones, you can drag them into this folder uh, and that's how it will look. Now you can boot up Pi Amiga. Okay, so it's good to have your controller plugged in, otherwise Pi Amiga doesn't tend to recognize it uh, if you plug it in later on. So I've got my wireless adapter with my Xbox 360 controller. There's a link in the description for that as always. Uh, so SD card, I found more recently, and this happens with several different operating systems, that uh, the it doesn't always boot if the boot media is in there first of all. So if you ever get problems with anything booting on Raspberry Pi, Boot it up first of all without anything in. So I'll turn it on now. So the screen will come on. Once you get to this point, then you can pop your SD card in. So now I'll put the SD card in. Okay, so here's the screen you get, uh, first of all. Now I've already updated mine, but if you want to know how to update, uh, if you press uh, F12, uh, and if you're on a Pi 400, you press function F2 but I'm using a normal keyboard, so I've got an F12 button. So to do the update, uh, hit quit, and this will take you out to terminal. Now the login is Pi and Pi Amiga. Okay, so you can see I'm in now, uh, and all I did was sudo apt update, which this is already updated, so I guess there's gonna be nothing on here. And then sudo apt upgrade And you can see I haven't got anything. Actually, I didn't try. Let's try sudo apt install neofetch, just out of interest. And let's type neofetch. So Raspbian Linux 10 Buster. Uh, not very much information there. Um, but this shows you that it's my 8 gig Pi and it shows you that it's not overclocked or anything. Okay, so let's do reboot. Okay, so we're back in the operating system uh, and all I really want this for is definitely games. Uh, I'm not interested in the audio side and the, and the imaging and things like that. So you need to check out the forums if you want more information on that. Uh, but it did take me quite a while to work out how to do it. And really the easiest way is just to go down to the bottom right here, iGame2, double click on that and that will give you an interface which has got all the games listed and they just launch from here. You just have to double click on them. But also, you can search for them here. So if I put in KIK, I can find Kickstart and you can see you get an image of it. You don't get an image of every game, but you do get an image of lots of games. So if I do 
C-A-N-N for cannon fodder. You can see that cannon fodder comes up here, but also you even get some of the cover discs. I was a subscriber of Amiga Format and Amiga Power back in the day, and uh, so I used to get free floppy disks and demos and things like that. And uh, it's nice to see that a lot of those are on here as well. So a few other tips. Uh, so the controller is on, but it's not enabled yet. So let's do F12 and go to input, see where it says port one, select my Xbox controller, you can see it's there. If it's not there, I found even unplugging and plugging in again doesn't show it up, you need to restart, so you need to get on to restart and once it's showing you're all right. So we're right on that, so let's hit resume. And you can always go in and out of that menu, so if you try a game and it doesn't actually work, you can keep going back to that menu. So I'm gonna do cannon fodder because it was one of the best memories of mine on the Amiga. It's a, it's a great, great system. And I remember the first time I tried this game, uh, I put it loading on my Amiga upstairs. I, th I think I might have got it as a Christmas present. Uh, and I had a big amplifier and two big, tall Jamo speakers because I was selling hi-fi systems at the time. Uh, and I was right into my music as I still am. And uh, I went away. I must have had my amp turned up quite loud because there was some music coming from my bedroom upstairs and I couldn't work out what the track was. I, I, I thought, oh, this sounds good. What? I, d I didn't know what it was. Anyway, let's boot up Cannon Fodder. I'll play a tiny bit of it. So let's hit start. Now I'm gonna turn off my speaker there because I don't like copyright strikes. Uh, but uh, this is all, uh, it's a proper music soundtrack. So I'll put it back on again. We'll probably get some speech. And so that song was playing, I couldn't work out what it was, and then I went to my Amiga and it was playing these, uh, these titles. Really, really good, and great sound from a, like, like sound I'd never heard from a computer system before. Okay, so let's go into a game. I'm using a trackpad, so it's gonna be a bit weird, um, but right click is fire, and I think it's press and hold for a grenade, was it? Uh, and left click tells your, tells your soldiers where to go. And this, I couldn't believe the gameplay on this. It was so good at the time. Let's just try a grenade. No, it's not press and hold then. Oh, you just press. <laughs> just a brilliant game. I'm getting a bit of flickering, which I wasn't getting before. And I wonder if that is something that can be sorted out by uh, that speed. So let's do F12. Oh, someone's coming. Let's do, oh, I lost someone then. Do F12 and uh, let's put it right down to seven megahertz and see if it just runs the same. But we're not getting those graphical errors. Oh, what was that? No, we are getting the graph. Oh, there, <laughs> there was a guy there. We are getting the graphical errors. They're probably worse than they were before. Um, I didn't have that when I played it before, so I don't know why that is. So let's do F12. Actually, let's do F10, because that usually quits a game, but not in this case. So then I don't know how to exit a game. Not every game exits the same, so I would probably do F12 and do restart. So there's loads of resources for the Amiga online, and uh, one of my favorite is Internet Archive. Uh, so I used to get Amiga Format and Amiga Power magazine. I used to subscribe to both and uh, I used to read them through cover to cover. And Amiga Power, uh, it was uh, a great magazine all about gaming. And uh, there was so many games came out for the Amiga and such good quality at the time. Uh, and if you go in the back section, there's uh, a big list of various different games. Uh, and it was the most popular ones at the time. And uh, it's just nice to go back through and see things that you might have missed. And now with something like Pymega, uh, you can then just tap in the name of it and you'll probably find that it's already installed. So uh, another great resource is Lemon Amiga. So I did a search for football games. And as you can see, there's a load of football games on the Amiga. But if I wanted to do a search for, say, motorbike games, I can go advanced search, scroll down. You can see here genre sports. So I can click on that, do racing. Click on subgenre and motorcycle, scroll down to the bottom and hit search games. And you can see it comes up with a load of motorbike games. And I saw no second prize, which uh, people had seemed to rate, which I don't remember from back in the day, but it looks cool. And uh, another really good thing about this site is that you have the manual is here uh, and also cheat mode. So if I click on the manual, 
you can see that you've actually got the information and I found out that this is controlled with a mouse. Here we go, so steering, slide the mouse to the left or the right to steer in that direction, accelerate, press the mouse button to accelerate, braking, press the left hand mouse button to apply the brakes. So, let's give that a go. Okay, so I've plugged in uh, a conventional mouse because I figure that if I'm going to drive with a mouse it's better that it's not a touchpad. So let's open up the games, and what was it called? No second prize. So let's click on that. You can see the screenshot comes up, so we'll double click it. And it's worth knowing at this point, it often comes up with a little box that tells you how to quit. Yeah, so in this case, this game is F10 to quit. Uh, no second prize, various information. Let's hit start. We've got some nice music, start season. Mouse sensitivity, I guess we'll leave that on three, although it feels pretty sensitive already. So right mouse button accelerate. Whoa, this is weird. Seems to be pretty smooth. I seem to be a lot slower than the rest. Do you reckon I've got gears? Ah, automatic gears, right, okay. That's better. God, this is so tricky with the mouse. It feels really twitchy. Obviously, I could change the sensitivity. Graphics look quite good. Consider it's 3D at the... Oh, that was... What an overtake. Oh, <laughs> I haven't used any brakes yet. Let's lay off a bit. Wow, that is hard. That is really hard. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is definitely an experience. That's pretty decent. Definitely something different. So, let's quit out of that. Well, F10. So while we're on motorbike games, uh, Road Rash was one of the games that I used to enjoy playing on the Amiga. Uh, it's certainly not as polished as uh, the game we just played, but it was good fun. So what's to quit out of this? Press help to quit. Now what, I don't know what help is on this. Now this will probably work with the controller, but because I've restarted, uh, I would imagine that I need to enable the controller again. So input, yeah. Xbox controller, resume. Yeah, that's picked up the controller. And it's so up on the controller to accelerate and back to brake. But the one thing about Road Rash that I think was its appeal was that you could do that and <laughs> you could take people out. There you go. So that's Road Rash. I don't seem to have a help key. Uh, I've tried pressing most of the buttons, so let's do function and F12 and restart. And it always comes up with a different wallpaper, as you can see here. Uh, so if I launch that games again, and let's go for Golden Axe. And what does this say? Press print screen to quit. Well, I don't know if that will be this. Have I got a print screen on this keyboard? I don't think I have. So it looks like the controller supported straight out. It reminds me of how good the sound was on the Amiga. Oh, what happened there? Oh, so this is on look, some super speed. Right, so I need to do F12. And this is definitely an example of where you need to drop the speed. So let's go for 14, see what happens there. Still too fast, look. So it needs to be seven. Oh, still feels fast. Well, it's a challenge. So let's try something else. And sometimes I get it reboot to this. Uh, so if I do uh, F12 and just re reset maybe. Yeah, and if this keeps happening, uh, I will do F12 and then I'll go to quit and then do reboot. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll just leave you with a bit more gameplay footage.